what i am going to talk today is uh, ca colon uh, what's the update in uh, fifth edition of who and this is the book you all might have seen the blue book and uh, i thought i will also talk uh, something beyond uh, the update in 2019 this is the team which uh, put together their time and knowledge and uh, their spare times into giving that beautiful blue book so GIT is uh, divided into 13 chapters, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, ampulla, appendix, colon and rectum, anal canal, liver, and intrahepatic bile ducts, gallbladder, extrahepatic bile ducts, pancreas, uh, mesenchymal tumors, others. And uh, there's another interesting thing, genetic tumor syndromes. There is a different chapter on it. And uh, today I'm going to concentrate only on the colon and rectum. And this will be my objective. We will just go through the WHO 2019 classification and then we will see what are the challenges in uh, CRC reporting, colorectal cancer reporting, and what are the IHCs in colorectal cancer, and what is the molecular testing in colorectal cancer. And I just want to talk about uh, very briefly about uh, Lynch syndrome, and I will end it up with uh, beautiful references and some take home message. The tumors of the colon and rectum mainly divided into benign epithelial tumors and precursors and malignant epithelial tumors. In the benign epithelial tumors, we have colorectal serrated lesions and polyps, conventional colorectal adenomas, inflammatory bowel disease associated dysplasia of the colorectum. In the malignant epithelial tumors, we have colorectal adenocarcinoma and colorectal neuroendocrine neoplasms. I will be mainly concentrating on colorectal adenocarcinomas, but I will uh, tell you what is the uh, main thing and uh, the concepts in the neuroendocrine neoplasms. So this is the table that's given in the WHO and I, I always want to make it a step by step so that you can understand. So we can uh, divide the thing into adenocarcinoma, neuroendocrine tumors, NYS, neuroendocrine carcinomas. Okay, neuroendocrine tumor is different from neuroendocrine carcinoma. I will highlight it in a minute. And then mixed neuroendocrine, non-endocrine, non-neuroendocrine neoplasm or myelin. So in the traditional adenocarcinoma, there are 10 types, serrated adenoma-like, micropapillary, mucinous, signet cell, poorly cohesive, medullary, adenosquamous with sarcomatoid component and uh, uh, undifferentiated uh, carcinoma, NOS. In the neuroendocrine tumors, three grades, grade one, two, three. And depending upon whatever it is producing, it is also divided, but uh, we don't follow this. We usually, all neuroendocrine tumors in the tubular organs, we give a grade one, two, three. I will tell the criteria in a minute. And then in the neuroendocrine carcinomas, it can be again small cell carcinoma and large cell carcinoma. And when you see adenocarcinoma and neuroendocrine tumors, we call it mixed neuroendocrine, non neuroendocrine neoplasms. I will be highlighting the concept down these slides. So see this slide. It's uh, predominantly like a tubular villus adenoma or villus adenoma there. And here you can see islands of cells going down and the morphology exactly look like adenoma, overlying adenoma of these invasive lesions. And there is no much desmoplastic uh, stroma also. So this is known as adenoma-like adenocarcinoma. Coming to the next one, you can see this is a hormone slide, normal mucosa you can see, and here you can see the invasive carcinoma. Even in the low power, you can see the uh, serrations in the lumen, but this is a carcinoma arising from the serrated polyp. So you, in the high power, you can see the nice serrations here. So this is a type of adenocarcinoma that's called as serrated adenocarcinoma. The third type is the one where you see a lot of lymphoid infiltrate. And when you go to the high power, you see the syncytial arrangement of the cells with the abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm and prominent nucleoli. See the prominent nucleoli, okay? So this is also known as medullary carcinoma, or this is what we used to call a, a MLH1 associate associated tumor. And if you want to compare, this is like a old uh, lymphoepithelioma of the nasopharynx. Okay. So this is called as medullary carcinoma uh, in the colon. Coming to the next type, you can see here pools of mucin and the cells are floating all around. 
And when you see uh, more than 50% of this making up the tumor, then you have to call it as mucinous carcinoma. That 50% is the criteria you have to remember. So in biopsies, don't call it as mucinous carcinoma because you don't know what is happening in the rest of the area. So you call it a carcinoma with mucinous features in the biopsy. In the excision, you can call it as mucinous uh, adenocarcinoma, mucinous type or mucinous carcinoma if it uh, is more than 50%. And this you all know beautiful signet cells. Again, 50% you have to remember. When you see these signet cells more than 50%, you call them as uh, signet cell carcinoma. The next type, you can see in this low power, you can see the colon here and infiltrating tumor. In the high power, you can see the retractions. And in the retractions, you can see the papillae. And these are really uh, papillae from your papillae or micro papillae because there is no uh, dominant fibrovascular core. This is like fingers coming out of fingers or a secondary or tertiary papillae. The primary papillae will have stroma in that, in the center. For example, if this is a papillae, there should be a stroma here. Whereas uh, in most of these things, stroma is not there. When there is a papillary process without fibrovascular core, it is known as uh, micropapillary carcinoma. Okay, so this is a micropapillary pattern. Again, this is uh, some of the very poor prognostic, prognostic adenocarcinoma. And the criteria you have to see is you have to see at least 5%. Okay, if it is more than 5%, you call it as micropapillary carcinoma because these directly go to the lymph node and they metastasize to other sites also. Prognosis is very bad. That's why you have to remember this type of adenocarcinoma. Coming to the next type, here you can see the glands in the area marked as A and it is adenocarcinoma, whereas here it looks more spamoid. Okay, even in the low power, you can see the gland formation and solidness, and this solidness looks more spamoid here. So, this is adenosquamous carcinoma. In the WHO criteria, they have not given any components how much adeno you have to see, how much squamous you have to see, they have not given the percentage of the component. So if you see adeno on squamous any amount, you call it as adeno squamous carcinoma. The prognosis is not very good when compared to adeno carcinoma NOS. What are you seeing here? Here you can see a lot of glands and here you see the stroma. In the uterus, we call it as carcinosarcoma. But in the gut, in the colon, we call it carcinoma with sarcomatide component. Previously, it is called as spindle cell carcinoma, but it is renamed as carcinoma with sarcomatide component, and it has a very bad prognosis. And molecularly, it is different when compared with the other uh, when compared with the other malignancies of the colon. And this is the pattern where you see sheets of cells. You don't know whether it is carcinoma. Can it be a Burkitt's lymphoma? Yes, you can see these some starry sky pattern. And uh, can it be a neuroendocrine carcinoma? Yes. You know by the markers, you may prove that these are epithelial origin, but beyond that, you cannot say anything. And these are the ones that are known as undifferentiated carcinomas. Okay, And they carry the worst prognosis. And the last type is none of the above. And you see, this is the garden variety of adenocarcinoma. And uh, the, this, that's why we called it as adenocarcinoma NOS. So there are usually 10 types in the new WHO system. And I kindly request all of you to take a snap of this. This table tells you what is the type, what is the criteria, what is the prognosis, and what is the pathogenesis. I'm practically talking about uh, more of uh, application point of view rather than molecular. Uh, I will be touching on molecular, but I don't want to go in depth of it because uh, it's more theoretical. And wherever it is practical, I will highlight the molecular features. And uh, this uh, graph nicely shows the prognostic difference or different carcinomas. You may be asking why we have to break our head. See, when you have to break your head, there should be some benefit to the patient. If there is no benefit to the patient in the way of prognosis or theranosis, especially targeted therapy this new era, there is no need to break your head. Okay, Here, adenoma like adenocarcinoma is having the best prognosis, whereas undifferentiated carcinoma is having the worst prognosis and all others are lying all across the field. Okay, That's why we have to exactly type the 
colony carcinomas so that we can uh, give some prognostic uh, view to the clinicians. That's all about the WHO 2019 uh, adenocarcinoma of the colorectum. Now I want to teach you the colorectal neuroendocrine neoplasm criteria. This picture is a must for you to remember, even though it is for pancreatic. That's why it is known as pan, pan net, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. But uh, this is what we follow in GAT also. Neuroendocrine tumor is different from neuroendocrine carcinoma. Neuroendocrine carcinoma is having a very high incidence of metastasis, whereas neuroendocrine tumor, it is not having that much of metastasis, okay? And any neuroendocrine tumor, it's divided into three grades, grade one, grade two, and grade three. In grade one, all neuroendocrine tumors will have a nested pattern. You all know it's a neuroendocrine, so no ducts, blood vessels act like a blood uh, the ducts for them. So they will be surrounding the nests of tumor cells. The typical example is carcinoid, which belongs to neuroendocrine tumor grade one. The criteria are the mitosis should be less than two or KI67 should be less than 3%. So this is a neuroendocrine tumor grade one or carcinoid. Neuroendocrine grade two or atypical carcinoid, the criteria is the mitosis can be two to 20 or the KI67 can be three to 20. Grade three is neuroendocrine tumor grade three. It is not neuroendocrine carcinoma because there is a lot of difference in the prognosis and the therapy treatment for the grade three neuroendocrine tumor and the neuroendocrine carcinoma. Here in neuroendocrine carcinoma, again, some nested pattern will be there in some areas. In some areas, they will be arranged in sheets. Mitosis will be more than 20 and K67 is more than 20. This is G3. But there's a very good question how will you differentiate G3 from neuroendocrine carcinoma? We have to depend on some immunohistochemistry and molecular, okay? TP53 and the retinoblastoma gene loss, they are mainly seen in, sorry, they are mainly seen in pancreatic neuroendocrine carcinoma. Whereas neuroendocrine tumor will have abnormal DAX or ATRAX uh, alterations and MEN1 uh, molecular uh, changes, okay? That is for neuroendocrine tumor. That difference is very, 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 very important. And this criteria, you have to follow the criteria very strictly. And for all neuroendocrine tumors, you are supposed to do KI67. And in all G3, you do immunohistochemically for TP53 and the retinoblastoma G, or molecularly, you can move for, look for SMAT and KRAS. Now, coming to the mixed, remember this uh, red bar, my arrow is not uh, seen there because that is also red in color. This red bar, please imagine that's the neuroendocrine tumor and the yellow one is the non-neuroendocrine tumor. Please remember the 30% uh, cutoff. To call it as mixed uh, neuroendocrine, uh, non-neuroendocrine tumor, you should have at least 30% of uh, neuroendocrine uh, component and 30% of non-neuroendocrine component. If you have more than 70% uh, uh, of uh, neuroendocrine tumor, you call it as neuroendocrine carcinoma with uh, focal uh, non-neuroendocrine pattern. You cannot call it as mixed endocrine neuro and non-neuroendocrine tumor. Remember the 30% criteria. And in mixed uh, endocrine, non-neuroendocrine uh, tumors, the another one you have to remember, it can be a collision tumor. Collision tumor means, you see again, this yellow may be um, endocrine and this may be non-neuroendocrine. They may be living together, okay? They are not mixed. Probably this is before marriage. And uh, composite tumor, they come together. This is like more after marriage, okay? So collision tumor, composite tumor, or amphicrine tumor, where in amphicrine tumor, the best example is goblet, goblet cell carcinoid, where a single cell has both the epithelial and neuroendocrine features. For example, in goblet cell carcinoid, the cytoplasm above the nucleus is more epithelial, whereas the cytoplasm below the nucleus is more endocrine. That's why it is known as amphicrine tumor. So this picture, this slide is very important uh, in understanding the concepts. I kindly request you to take a snap of this. How do you grade the mixed endocrine, non-neuroendocrine? It depends upon what is the grade of components. When both are having carcinoma, for example, 
non neuro endocrine carcinoma and neuro endocrine is g3 or smaller large cell carcinoma then it will be high grade when the epithelial is carcinoma and the non epithelial is low grade g1 or g2 then it is known as intermediate grade minor when the epithelium is benign and uh, the neuro endocrine component is also low grade then it will become a low grade minor okay this is also another important concept all amphicrine carcinomas will come under intermediate grade uh, minor so in the who 2019 there are few things that are added or removed or uh, named newly these are all the things i want to highlight and uh, what are all the things that came new adenoma adenoma like adenocarcinoma is a new terminology similar to that adenosquamous carcinoma is a old terminology but it is having its own entity in the previous uh, fourth edition whereas now adenosquamous carcinoma is part of a adenocarcinoma it is not a separate entity that's why i put it under the new uh, the grading is also new now remember we have to see what is the gland formation if it is more than 95 it is grade 1 50 to 95 grade 2 and uh, less than uh, 50% gland formation is grade 3 that is gone now the in the new who they follow only two grades low grade and high grade previous g1 g2 falls under low grade and the previous g3 falls under high grade and even if you have one focus of high grade it will become a high grade so you have to go for the least differentiated component regardless of the amount and you should not see the grade at the invasive font because in the invasive font there is lot of things happening between the epithelium and mesenchyme we don't know what is happening in the epithelial mesenchyme junction and uh, especially tumor budding which we will be talking in a minute can be seen in them so you cannot take that into grading okay it has to be in the main tumor so that's a new criteria you have to remember spindle cell carcinoma is renamed as carcinoma with sarcomatoid component cribriform comedotype and squamous cell carcinoma has been removed from the colorectal cancer it is there in the esophagus it is there in the anal canal but it has been removed from the colorectal cancers they introduce nicely four uh, five tables we will be seeing them prognostic histological features post therapy assessment predictive biomarkers genes implied in carcinogenesis and hereditary cancer syndromes so they are nice uh, tables are there and then they talked briefly about uh, the cancer genomic atlas molecular subtype and uh, none of the who book will be complete if they are not talking about pd1 and pdl1 therapy 